Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In this week's episode, I'll show you how to use shoulda matchers in your tests. If you want to code along, you'll need a Rails app created, RSpec installed and set up, and a parent and child model created. You can check out these other videos where we set these up in the RSpec Rails episode and the Nested Forms episode. This episode is a continuation of other episodes explaining and demonstrating dev gems that I set up in the Get Launching series. In this episode, I'll focus mostly on shoulda matchers, and then I'll throw in an explanation of spring at the end so we can be complete. I'll finish off the series next week with letter opener. Shoulda matchers provides RSpec and Minitest compatible one-liners that test common Rails functionality. These tests would otherwise be much longer, more complex, and error prone. I'll show you what that means in just a moment, but first let's look at the GitHub page where it lists a lot of the methods that you can use in your tests with this gem. Some for active record, for models, for controllers, and here's a quick how you install it with RSpec and other test frameworks. So now I'd like to actually show you some great documentation that it has. It has the official documentation. And there you get a longer explanation and some examples for each of these methods. For example, today we are going to use accept nested attributes for, and you click on there and it has an example for you. Before we start putting this into our own code, I'd like to show you an example of how should a matcher simplifies your code. So you could write the scenario, rspec describe hacker type model do, it is invalid without an email. So then you would build your hacker and it should not be valid. While on the other hand, if you use should have matchers, you can simply use the line, it should validate presence of email. And you can see how that's a lot simpler. All right, let's put this to use in our own code. Back in the nested forms episode, we created a starship model, which was the parent and crew members as a child model. Let's now add some validations. We're going to validate that the starship has a name. So we'll put that into our spec and then add the validation into our model. Jumping into our text editor, we will go into the spec folder, into models, into the file already created when we generated the model. And we will now replace this line with it should validate presence name. And of course, we will now run the spec to make sure that we have written the spec correctly and it'll point us in the direction so we can make the spec pass. Opening up our terminal, let's go our spec and then spec and I'll use tab to autocomplete models and then starship spec. And it will fail, of course, the first time and it'll tell us that, oh, it's not actually finding a validation. So let's go ahead into the model and into Starship. And then we need to add that validation line to validate that it indeed has a name. So I'll add that right here. Validates presence of name. All right, back to our terminal. Let's run that spec again and see if the spec passes and it does. Now taking a quick look back at our model, we're not actually testing the accepts nested attributes for. So let's add that. So we will add the simply the line, it should accept nested attributes for crew members. Back in our spec, let's add that line. Simple line to check for nested attributes. And save and now run the spec again. Make sure that it comes out green with two scenarios, and it does. Moving on to our next example, I'll show you how to use shoulda matchers in a controller. But first we need to set up our controller so the spec will pass. For controllers, there are a lot of different scenarios that are pending because you have not yet defined valid attributes, invalid attributes, and new attributes, and shown how you can check those attributes. These are not set up for you when you run the generator for a controller or for a scaffold. They let you do that later, so there are a whole lot of pending scenarios. So we're gonna go ahead and use Factory Girl to 
build these attributes. Now, as I was reviewing for this episode, there is a bit of a debate on whether or not to use Factory Girl in this sense because controllers are specifically trying to test for valid and invalid attributes. I go towards going ahead and using Factory Girl because I'm also using feature tests and feature tests can overlap in a lot of ways with controller specs. There's actually a whole other debate on whether or not you even need controller specs if you're using feature tests. If you'd like to share your opinion on these debates, please leave a comment below. For today, let's just make this pass. So I'm going to use Factory Girl to build the Starship attributes that are valid. And then I'm going to actually put in that name is nil for the invalid attributes. As we've already defined in our model, this will come up as invalid. Then for new attributes, I am going to give it a specific name, which will probably be different than what Factory Girl will give us. So let's put name Renegade, as that may be the future name of a Star Trek series. We don't know yet. And then a method to compare the two hashes, the new attributes hash, with the new Starship once it's updated to make sure those match. Alrighty, let's set this up. So let's go to Spec and Controller. And we'll scroll down and we will now replace this skip add hash of attributes. Let's use factory girl to build that. And now we will save and then invalid attributes we will put in as name nil. So let's make that pretty. Let's go ahead and run the spec. So we will run the spec with controller, starship controller. So running the spec, let's see where we are. And it's going to go through the different scenarios. There, okay. And then, oh, the yellow means there's still one pending. So, oh, right, we need to put in what the new attributes would be. So let's go ahead down. And here we are in the line it gave us around line 109 so let's go ahead and put in renegade and then we will put in the method to compare the hashes and save that so let's run that spec again this time we should get all greens lots of different things for the controller especially if you build a scaffold 16 examples there we go now we're ready to play with some shoulda matchers so let's just pretend that marketing has asked us to create a new URL they're going to use to market the starships. So we're going to create a URL that says create underscore your underscore own underscore starship. But we're going to redirect that to the new starship path. So with should have matchers, you can simply say it should redirect to new starship path. And also, just to make sure it's the new action, it should redirect to action new. In our Starship controller, we'll need to add that new method, create your own Starship, and redirect it to the new Starship path. And then we'll need to add that route to the routes file. Back in our controller spec, let's add that new scenario to the end and save. And then we will go to our controller file and then add that method just below destroy before the private methods. So we'll add the create your own starship here and save that. And then finally, we'll go to our routes to config routes and add that route. We'll add it just under get admin hacker list. And so we'll add that and save. We'll run that spec again to see if our new scenarios pass. We actually added two of them. We're going to that it should match the redirect to the new path and then to the action new. So that's 18. Yay! As promised, here is a brief description of Spring. Spring is a Rails application preloader. It speeds up development by keeping your application running in the background so you don't need to boot it every time you run a test, rake task, or migration. In Rails 4.1 and up, Spring is included by default. And that's why I include it in mine. It's a helpful thing. It just speeds things up. Be sure to check out the GitHub page for more info. That's it for this episode of Ruby Thursday. Quick reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Feel free to leave comments there 
or actually on the website in the comments section below. Let me know if you have any questions and weigh in on those debates about controller specs. If you are not already on my mailing list, be sure to head over to rubythursday.com and sign up so you can get some more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.